They throw away the darndest things. That was in the dumpster, everything. Went out the food. This is how much food I left. This is a tree that we make sure no one messes with, no one camps around. They asked us if we stay here, we, we have to make sure that, you know, it's old, it's big. A big tree. Right. What? You going to the elders first? Yeah, I went to, I went to Carlos Thank you. and Renegade and all of them first. Okay. Yeah, I know. Keep some for yourself. And he's an elder too. Yeah. I'm almost completely blind. My left eye's completely gone. I got lower back problems. I got hepatitis C. I got liver cancer. Oh, I got, uh, and I remember going to the doctor. They told me 10 years ago I'd be dead. I'm still here. They have an eight year waiting list for Section 8, so I don't, I don't even try to get that. I bet it here are too expensive. Yeah, we can't. I mean, some people are necessary. You can't get, you can't go indoors because you're going to have three times the rent. Yeah. Uh, well, they haven't been harassing us lately, but uh, they usually harass you and give you tickets. And, and you got there's some lunatics out here. You have to deal with them sometimes. And one lunatic creeping around my house in the shed, I have to tell him straight out, and you come around here again doing that. I got a spear gun, I'll spear you. Right now, I have a problem with rats. I've killed three of them so far. I gotta be careful where I put stuff because of the dogs. In the wintertime, you want a little, little tent. This is too big. I just bought that because it's summer. But in the wintertime, you want a small tent because it's easier to heat up. We know we're not supposed to be here, but we're homeless. And if I had someplace else to go, I would go there. And if you talk to the authorities that deal with me here, I try to cooperate as much as possible because I understand this, the reality of everything. People would like to use this place as what it was meant to be, a public uh, place for people to recreate, or, uh, have fun. I personally have been here 10 years, so the pandemic isn't what's got me here. The fact that the, because of the pandemic, I have an excuse now to try to fight to stay where I've been for 10 years and the fact that, that during the pandemic, I was never brought a meal from the government. I was never brought water, even sanitation things, which other homeless people, they got those things. Here, we managed somehow to live reasonable without putting any weight on anybody because we don't want to get kicked out of here. We all get along. We're like a family. You know, if people try to separate us, that, that, that'd be the wrong thing to do because how you can separate a family like that? You know, there's people that have been here 40, 30, 20, you know, 20 years. You can't, you know, you separate, separate, what you gonna give us a motel room? We don't want that. If that was the case, go to a motel. But over here, you know, there's no trouble, there's no, no crimes, nothing. We've all been together, God, 20 years. And, and, they, some of them were my clients, and, and, and so when I got stuck homeless, I just came out to them. There's nobody else you're gonna do. <laughs> but uh, it's wonderful. We're different together, and we take care of one another. But I, there's no place we can go again. They kicked us out of from over there, and we went to the orchard, and then the orchard they redid um, into homes, and so now we're here, and there's nowhere else really to go. And we're not the only ones becoming homeless. People are becoming homeless every day. And a lot of old people are, which is sad. It's real sad. I mean, they work hard all their life for retirement, and it's not that much. Yeah, again, I get an apartment. I'm on retirement. The rent's too high. I can maybe pay the rent, but I couldn't do utilities. I couldn't eat. And my dogs wouldn't have dog food. Um, I just want, I just want a little place for me and my dogs, and I just want to do what I want to do. I've done worked all my life, raised kids. I just, it's my time. I don't really know any other way of life. You know what I mean? Like I'm 55 now and I was like 23 when I came here. So it's a long, it's been a long time. So I don't really know any other way of life. And I just don't feel comfortable inside walls. No. You know what I mean? Sitting inside of a motel room or something like that. No. Yeah. I don't have much time now. I'm dying. They made that quite clear to me. I've done everything I can to get rid of my cancer and it's not going to go away. Yeah, I've been here for 15 years. I've been here a long time. I've tried to leave a few times, and it's, without money, you just can't do it. I, I cook for people, I counsel people. I try, I'm the peacemaker. I'm the peacemaker. I'm trying. I used to be the, the 
piece of gear, you know, but I mean, but when Bobby died, you know, it was, he just, he, you know, it was perfect when Bobby was here. I mean, we're not perfect. We're not. We get in our fights. We get in, you know, but, you know, if something come down, we all come together. You know, we're family. 